Hello everyone, it's Logan here today. I wanted to bring you a video about my space shuttling adventures and you can see I've actually modified uh, the space shuttle at least from the way NASA has it. And I wanted to, to let you know why. If you already know about space shuttles you can probably skip forward and just see what I created. But if you don't, I just wanted to give a, a quick, a real short tutorial about why space shuttles work the way they do. So. The way NASA space shuttle is set up is that obviously it has one big tank out here, big orange tank, and a couple smaller boosters. Well, one of the problems with that is if uh, we turn on center of thrust here, you can see in my modified version the center of mass is directly in line with the center of thrust. That keeps it stable. Now NASA's center of mass is way out here. The problem that creates is that if you apply a force not directly in line with the center of mass, or in other words, tangentially, it will actually cause a torque, which means that your craft will start to rotate. And in real life, and really even in Kerbal, there's not a powerful enough SAS system or RCS to really make that work. So uh, what I just, the, the way NASA handles it is actually by gimballing their engines. Um, and if you take a look at any photos or, or rather video of the space shuttle launching, you'll always see, at least early on, the engines at a, an extreme angle so that they can point through that center of mass wherever it happens to be. Now, another problem is that uh, the center of mass changes over time. So as we reduce the amount of fuel in the tank, you can see the center of mass moving. And that's what happens in the real space shuttle, is that the mass tends to move down and in, so the engines have to keep up with that, which is really hard to do in Kerbal Space Program. Uh, the other issue is that in real life, the space shuttle engines can gimbal up to about 10 degrees. The highest gimbling engine we have in Kerbal is only 4 degrees, and these mainsails are only 2. So they can't move anywhere near as much as you would want them to. So I solved that just by keeping the center of mass almost directly in line with the center of thrust. And then that tiny offset I can actually uh, deal with just fine. The other thing I did is I actually, you can see offset, use the offset tool and move the part over here to keep it pretty much in line as you would expect. So that's the uh, quick tutorial and I just realized Maybe that's why I was having a little bit of an issue there, that uh, that was actually not directly in line with the body. But, on to the good stuff. So, here we go. You can see it's actually quite stable, keeping that center of mass right in line with the center of thrust. Working pretty well. And one thing you can't see too easily here is that I actually have the top and bottom gray tanks draining into the middle orange tank. So it's it's really keeping that center of mass as close as possible. You'll also notice that I'm doing a rather steep ascent. Uh, ordinarily I'd be starting my gravity turn around 10,000 meters, but the new aerodynamics uh, of 1.0 uh, really seems to hinder that a little bit. So I do a little bit of a steeper turn and, and in fact now I've gotten it down where I can do it around 20, 25 pretty consistently and there we are going into orbit. Just thinking though, you know, there should be a uh, stewardess coming along with some snacks though, right? No? Yeah? Nothing? No, no stewardesses. Completely empty in the cabin. I love what they've done to the place though. It looks fantastic. Okay, so now that we're in orbit, it's time to come back. And I had a sneaking suspicion the entire time that I did not have enough wing surface on this craft. And in fact, yeah. <laughs> yep, that's uh, very much true. There's actually one other thing I discovered too, which is that uh, now that all the fuel's gone, the center of mass actually slipped behind the center of lift just a little bit. Uh, in fact, you want the center of lift to be behind the center of mass. Um, so those two factors, uh, wrong placement of the center of mass and the, and the uh, small wing surface, yeah, but you know, they seem to be happy. Bob there smiling big. 
Now, you can probably guess what happened. Um, yeah. Tried to steer it, but nope. And, uh, of course, like oh so many uh, times before, no survivors. Great explosion, though. So, this is what I decided to call the beetle on account of... I don't know, that's what it kind of looks like to me. So basically, I kept the same middle stage, but I added the fuel tanks permanently on the side. Now, really, the only benefit to that is that you're reducing cost because you don't have to worry about ejecting and not recovering tanks. The downside is that you don't get as much delta V uh, because the tanks are staying with you, so you're lugging around, you know, multiple tons of tanks. Uh, but we still got the three mainsails on there, plenty of fuel. That's the other upside is we actually have quite a bit of, of extra fuel. And uh, easily able to uh, make orbit, not a problem. Still got that big cargo bay. And uh, I got a little cocky here. I decided, you know, who needs wings, who needs parachutes. All I did was I, I put a few wing parts on the bottom of the ship. And I decided, well, clearly that would be enough, right? I mean, that would be enough to fly it home. Not even a problem. And so far here, we're actually doing quite well. And I was, I was pretty excited. I thought, you know what? This is going to work just fine. Uh, we got a little bit of lift surface down there. And I realized we had a little extra fuel. So uh, let's see if we can actually go for the... Kerbal Space Center there but then we really start biting into the atmosphere and yeah hubris hubris on my part but uh, you know again the, the Kerbal seem quite happy and uh, boy I mean that really bleeds off speed fast I'm actually quite surprised it didn't fall apart but it looks pretty cool uh, I think though the wheels actually did more harm than good there. I, I really actually thought I'd be able to la uh, land this thing on the runway. But not only did it lose too much speed, but I just I couldn't regain it. It just did not have enough speed to, uh, to force any kind of lift on it, or it was just too heavy for the amount of lift it did have. Um, however, I wasn't entirely wrong. So it's falling quite slow. And uh, as a result, we don't need any parachutes. We'll just go head first directly into the water. And clearly we're going to survive. <laughs> yes! Yes, we did survive. We don't need no parachutes. Both, both cabins survived. Alright, so this is, is the next version. This is what I call the Super Beetle. I basically took two of the beetles with them side by side, strapped them together with some struts. The only difference is that uh, on the second one, I took off the crew cabin and, and command module and strapped on more fuel tanks. And I also strapped on a couple of nuclear rockets, thinking, oh, you know, that might give us a little extra delta V. The problem is this thing was so heavy that even four nuclear engines only provided, uh, I think, is it half a meter per second? of Delta V or, or a little over one. It was very, very little. And uh, that actually hindered it quite a bit. So the extra weight of those nuclear rockets uh, basically ended up losing any efficiency that they might have brought to the ship because the regular engines could have could have done better. So with even more Delta V, we easily made it into orbit. So now it's time to come home. And this one is actually more stable than the last one. I got rid of those wing surfaces on the bottom. And uh, yeah, this is actually quite nice. It's very, very stable. Who needs heat shields? But this time I brought parachutes. And I actually brought about 60 parachutes. And I figured that would be more than enough. However, um, one of the problems is that I opened the parachutes while the bay doors were closed. So apparently that staged them but didn't actually open them. 
and now my staging button is useless. So what I finally decided to do was actually go in both cargo bays and slowly open parachutes. But then I realized, okay, it starts spinning it around because it's pulling on one side. So then I have to flip around to the other side and start opening parachutes and then flip around to the other side and the other side and just keep doing that. And I had 60 parachutes I had to open while this thing is spinning around and <laughs> and falling down all at the same time. And I kept hitting the bay door close. So note to self, always open bay doors before activating parachutes. Um, however, parachutes are slowing me down a bit and I realized, you know what, I actually do have some fuel left. So I can just end up you know, using that as we get closer here. There we go, and I thought, well, I might just make it, but unfortunately the nuclear engines don't provide a lot of thrust. Yeah, they survived though. I love how parachuting debris pieces still explode even when, it, when they hit the ground. So, here is my next iteration, and I think this is going to be the one that I keep. So I pared it down, so I got rid of the fuel tanks that are connecting to the body. So I still have discardable fuel tanks. Those particular engines are great to use low down in the atmosphere because they have a lot more efficiency lower down in the atmosphere. And then by the time we get up there, uh, we can discard them and use much more efficient uh, either nuclear rockets or uh, something else. So yeah, not having really any problem at all getting into orbit. Yeah, separation went quite well. Plenty of thrust. Actually, what are we at? With all the engines firing, we're at about 6 meters per second. So, not too bad. I mean, it takes a while to fully get into orbit. Those discardable tanks, you know, I thought on the side there that maybe we'll end up discarding those. But so far I've found now yeah, they're actually okay to keep. So here we go getting into orbit. And uh, I decided, you know what, let's send it off to Minmus. So before we do that, you can see what I brought. So I actually brought a drill and also the uh, storage tank there and you can see the processing station in the other one I also brought another lander craft so say I go to uh, a place that has a little bit heavier gravity that maybe this craft fully loaded doesn't have the, the thrust to be able to land on I have a secondary lander there of course I could take that out and have and just save on uh, you know, I'd bring some extra Delta V there. But uh, in this case, I decided to bring everything with me because who knows where we'll go next. And of course, Minmus having lower gravity is a great place to land on and refuel now that I got this drill. So that's what I do. And uh, I wasn't sure. One thing I realized was that the lander legs don't quite pass the, the uh, engines and I didn't know how much force those engines were going to be able to take. Probably not much. So I decided to set her down really carefully, less than a meter per second, um, as little as possible. This is where we're refueling anyway. And there we go. And uh, there, that's where she sits right now. She's going to be sitting there for quite a while, um, but uh, she's definitely ref refueling. But she's got so many tanks that uh, she's going to be there for quite a while. And the other thing is power generation. That drill and the processing station takes a lot. But thanks for checking this out. Let me know what, what else you want to see. Like it if you like it. Dislike it if you didn't like it. And don't forget to subscribe because i got a lot more coming. And of course, have a great day.